Wow. Forgive that intrusion, great lord, but goblins are inclined to be outspoken, and I like to encourage their initiative. Well, for goodness sake, it's Katrina Porter. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's from the song. Yeah. Well, hi, Ona Serene. Welcome to Split Happens, all you wood nymphs. <laughs> God. <And such. laughs> Why this... am I never prepared for any time we have any type of... Cause, because you don't think I can go more weirder? stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, challenge accepted. What? Each episode, Katrina and I talk about a movie both of us love. However... Only one of us is going to be allowed to defend it, and they are the pro of the episode. And of course, that means that the other person is the con, and they have to attack it. I am the pro today, so I get to defend it. And I am going to decimate this movie like the character development in the movie we were talking about. <gasps> How oh, started already. Dare you? Which can only mean we're talking about 1985's Legend. Yeah, we are. Oh, I <laughs> nerded out so hard. For me, I nerded out so incredibly hard watching this. That's pretty impressive. I know. We have three rules that we must follow. Number one, whoever claims pro first on a movie that we haven't covered yet gets the pro. Number two, the con does not have to attack until the synopsis starts. Thank you. God. And number three, during the synopsis, the con can't say anything nice about the movie. And we've had to add a penalty for breaking number three, because we did not understand the assignment <laughs> that we made ourselves. Right. The penalty is the offender has to say a good thing about the movie they hate the most. And mine is, without a doubt, the remake of Clash of the Titans. And Katrina's. Mine is the abomination Hannibal not the TV series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the movie. It's not a movie. It's an abomination. Oh, the abomination. Yeah. You will know that this rule has been broken by the sound. Oh, I'm in a glass case of emotion. You know, I, sorry if you guys, if there's anybody out there that liked these movies, but you know, you're wrong. They were terrible. <laughs> and, and we pity you. <laughs> Get better. I could be wrong, but I feel like we sound a little different. Again. Yeah, we're on location. Again. Uh, again, kind of. Not not in Chicago. Not, not in Chicago. Not Chicago. No. And we but the good thing is we don't have to try to do an accent and offend anyone by where we're on location right now. I'm still gonna try. I know. It's a little hard to explain, so we're not gonna get into it, but my husband's family has had this lake property for over a hundred years and it's outside Wichita, which is about two and a half hours from where we normally record in our home studio. And uh, we're recording out here at the lake because it's Memorial Day weekend. Mm. And this place is awesome. Oh, but yeah. you all might be asking, wait, split, split up in sisters? If you're there, does that mean you're not drinking your margaritas? Oh, they would never. They would never question that. I hope not because we are. We are. They're not as jumbo gigantor as the ones at Alcapulco, but... We do our best. There are some ice cubes in these because it's hot as fuck in this room. Sorry. It is hot as balls. This is what we call the true death room because it's got a gigantic window. <laughs> so when you wake up in the morning, if you're a vampire, you're dead ski. Um, can you say, I'm really sorry. I've, I think I sound a little scratchy and stuffy. And I did last episode too. And it's, it's actually not because of the booze. It's the ding dong allergies. I've got horrible allergies like everybody does. Okay. This, uh, here's the disclaimer. I love this movie, and I'm going to say i got plenty of notes. Oh, boy. I'm excited. I love when you come with, with, a, with a truckload of, of trash. I'm doing my truckload of trash dance. I guess my disclaimer is I feel like this opening part, usually I try to get to the synopsis as quickly as possible because people don't want to just listen to people ramble. But this movie has, there's a lot to it. There's a lot that went into it. So it might be a little bit longer this time. But I'm going to try to jump in as, as quickly as possible. Okay. But uh, we're going to talk about the bones of the movie, and then we'll start the synopsis and get into the guts. 
Okay. Cool. So I can, I don't have to say anything bad yet. That's correct. This movie, The Legend, was directed by Sir Ridley Scott. He has been knighted. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably for this movie. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. His first movie was called The Duelist, and it's a really good movie. The, I don't think I've seen that. Probably not. Nobody has. It has Keith Carradine <laughs> and Harvey Keitel. He wanted to do an... Sir Ridley Scott wanted to do an adaptation of the story of Tristan and Isolde. Okay. But saw Star Wars and he was like, what's up, visual effects? <laughs> so instead, yeah, he, that's what he said. Okay. I was, I was there. We'll get back to that, I guess. Well, so instead he made Alien. Oh, I was gonna, oh okay. So he made a, a movie with good special effects. Right. Okay. And it was an immediate success, of course. Mm-hmm. People loved it. His next project was, of course... Legend? Dune. I know what you're thinking. He didn't direct Dune. That's correct. He was involved for the better part of a year, and he worked on three drafts, and he was actually planning on splitting it up into two movies. Uh Oh. But then his older brother unexpectedly died of cancer. Oh. And he realized that Dune was going to be a huge undertaking with years of work, and he just didn't have the heart to do it at the time because he was still mourning his brother. Oh, man, that's sad. Yeah. So he dropped out of that. He decided to go with a production he thought would be a little more fast-paced, and that became Blade Runner. Oh, okay. Right. That and little no movie. Right. We actually just talked about this when we recorded Black Dynamite. Dynamite! Dynamite! But it did not go great at the box office. <laughs> Didn't do great. But he still really wanted to cover a fairy tale story, like, you know, Tristan Isold. But instead of going with that, like he originally thought, he thought it'd be better to come up with an original story rather than try to adapt an existing story. He and writer William Hurtsberg, there's a lot of consonants in his name. Because <laughs> he's, he, he's, I don't know if he's Swedish, but it looks Scandinavian. You didn't, you didn't put as much effort into that as you did. Chandrasekhar. De- uh, you mean Jay Chandrasekhar? <laughs> <laughs> Still got that one in my brain. They worked on the script. And I mean seriously worked on it because Legend went through 15 revisions. And this is what they came up with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sir Ridley Scott wanted it to look like a Disney movie. I love that you've you've locked in on calling him Sir Ridley Scott. (laughs) Yeah. I am. Sir Ridley of Scott (laughs) wanted it to look like a Disney movie and tried to get their involvement. But they said no because they were too busy (laughs) turning out those mega hits like Black Cauldron and and Return to Oz. (laughs) You know. All those. Mega hits. Right. He then tried to get Brian Froud involved as a conceptual designer, but he turned it down and worked on a different project. Do you remember Brian Froud's name? Brian Frau? You have to go way back early in our episodes. Uh, for, oh yeah, from Warlock? Not quite. Labyrinth. Oh. Sir Ridley of Scott. Ended up getting <laughs> Ellen Lee as a visual consultant. And Ellen Lee is definitely known best for being the illustrator for the Tolkien books. All the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit and, you know, all of that. And it makes perfect sense when you look at the visuals for Legend. Okay. It's a beautiful movie. Glitter and all. Do you know how many times I have glitter in my notes? I bet it's a lot. A lot. Fantasy movies were really feeling themselves in the 80s. They had a glow up. And even the ones that were box office bombs have become cult favorites. Okay. Many of them are on our list. We have the three L's, our L hat trick. Labyrinth, yeah. Legend, Lady Hawk? That's correct. All right. Uh, the 80s were to fantasy movies like the 90s were to natural disaster movies. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, that was, it was so in at the time. Legend debuted and it did not do well. What? I know. Its budget was $24.5 million and it only ended up with about $23 million, and that's worldwide. What do you think the glitter budget was on this movie? High. $21 million? Possibly. <laughs> the movie faced quite a few problems during production, but we're going to talk about that throughout the synopsis. Okay. This movie has at least four different versions. The original European release, the American theatrical release, a network TV version, this is a little bit shorter, and a director's cut. Oh, I I briefly saw the director's cut. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite. It is? It is. And not to flex, but I've seen them all <laughs> a few times. That's a, that's a major flex right there. Well, because the American theatrical version is the most accessible to us, 
and it's also the version we're most familiar with, that's the one we're going to use today. And it's kind of important because they are very different mm -hmm. than movies. Okay. Are you ready to go? I am. And I'm going to say again, I love this movie. I don't. We think... love this movie a lot. I love this movie a lot. Oh, we saw this many, 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 many times. Many. I don't think you're going to, I don't think you're going to trip me up. Uh, you don't think you're going to get button push? Nope. For real? For real. We'll see. Okay. You know, you're on location and you're drinking Mark. That's right. Play the fucking song. You got it. <laughs> Let the games begin. Well, speaking of songs, we begin with a synth pan flute. <laughs> well, sorry. This soundtrack is done by Tangerine Dream. I'll get back to that. And we get some exposition. And it's telling us that the world was once shrouded in darkness. And then the splendor of light came and told darkness to get fucked. Is this a movie or a novella? <laughs> I was like, when, how long is this intro? It's quite long. It is. It is quite long. He has a few things he wants to say. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Well, Darkness did what most villains do. He mm. retreated and vowed revenge by getting a rid of light forever. <laughs> but as everyone knows, light is tucked away in the souls of unicorns. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. And unicorns can only be accessed by the purest of mortals. Everybody knows that. Okay. Yeah. Like our hero, Jack. And then we find out because the exposition dump is still going. Still gone. Yeah, it is. They're being thorough. They want to make sure that we understand everything going in. There's nothing thorough about this movie except for glitter. That is thorough. For sure. It's so thorough that you quit reading. <gasps> quit reading? How dare you? I, can you believe I'm saying that? That's how fucking long this thing is. I was like, all right, enough words. It's That's just a lie. No, I There's not a word that you won't read. The intro to this movie. We see in the exposition that a girl named Lily loves Jack and they think that no evil exists because they've never had to deal with clamshell packaging. <laughs> okay, so about the soundtrack. This is the American version, which means that we get the Tangerine Dream version of it. But as it was originally conceived, Legend was scored by Jerry Goldsmith and he's had about a billion movies that we would recognize. It was kind of weird for him to even collaborate with uh sir really of scott again because <laughs> they didn't do great together on alien oh and he actually said that being an alien was one of the most miserable experiences he's ever had in the profession and uh try being that cat yeah well <laughs> hjortsberg his script is is what um lured him in and he spent six months preparing what he came to record as he felt the best score he's ever done for this movie? It is. You haven't seen it unless you saw all of the director's cut. You haven't seen it. Okay. I have many times. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, his work was uh, trimmed when Legend was cut for international release. One of the heads at the, one of the studios, because this was actually distributed by two different studios, felt like it uh, needed to appeal better to teenagers. And teenagers love nothing more than the uh, German electronic band Tangerine Dream. Well, that makes sense because this movie lacks substance and facts, Oof. which would really appeal to teenagers. What about all that what the bullshit you read in the beginning? Nobody read nothing that. Nothing but facts. Nobody read that. Well, that's your fault. No, l later on, I'm like, we'll get to what I thought mm. later on. You know what's really sad about uh, Goldsmith, Jerry Goldsmith, is that he was nominated 18 times for Academy Awards and he won once once and i just want to mention he did this the entire star trek franchise he did the rambo franchises he did logan's run planet of the apes tora 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 Patton, chinatown alien poltergeist which we know was a great soundtrack gremlins uh hoosiers total recall air force one la confidential mulan the mummy he's done uh, he's done about a billion he even does the the opening fanfare thing for universal pictures and did, for Paramount Pictures. So what did he win an Oscar for? The Omen. Oh. That was it. We get in to the, the meat of the film mm -hmm. after that uh, fantastic thing that lets you know what's going on. And we get our first glimpse at Darkness. And he's played by Tim Curry. And he has glowing black light eyes and nails because this was the 80s. Neon. Yeah. Neon. Neon eyes was huge in the 80s. You know that. I'm going to say it. And this could be controversial. Oh, boy. I don't think that goblin's a real goblin. Uh, uh, is this really one of your attacks? <laughs> Surely not. I don't, I don't know. I'm not buying it. 
Wow. Well, darkness is sad and he, because despite his sweet digs and his hell staff persons who clearly love their job, he ain't got no one to snuggle with at night. But do you, do you what, he, like, he wants that. When they first show the dungeon yeah. and the guy's like killing the yeah. guy on the slab and you can see it just like the body keeps folding up. It's yeah. clearly like a dummy. <laughs> it's, so, it's so obvious when you look at it. I thought it was a go- I thought it was a real person. Yeah, like that's a real goblin. Wait, who said they were gob- uh, Wait, what? <laughs> being a t- being chomped or being a t- you know tickled in half, uh-uh. or the one that's doing the tickling? He looks like an accordion. Yeah. Every time he hits him in the stomach, it's just like whoop whoop. Maybe he's a jokester. The jokester in this movie is the screenwriter. Okay. Tim Curry really struggled with the makeup and prosthetics required for him. <laughs> Poor guy. He his the biggest problem with it is it would make him unrecognizable, and he was very against that. The biggest problem is that he has red a red ball sack hanging from his chin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell me that's not true. It's a it's a it's a it's a swinging mm-hmm. low hanging ball sack that's that's fiery red Mm-mm. on his Mm-mm. chin. Just deep chin. He's got a strong chin. Strong chin is what he has look at it it looks like a w well he it was this shit was really heavy and it was really hot and it was kind of painful specifically the contacts he was not thrilled he should have been not thrilled because tim curry was wasted on this movie he was in this movie for like five minutes you know what's funny about that is we are watching the american version of Mm -hmm. this he doesn't even get shown to like the uk audiences until an hour in so you don't actually see his his face until an hour in. That's ridiculous. His the character he played in Chorus Line was like a small small character, and he was on screen more in that movie than he was in this movie. Again, not Tim Curry, Terrence Mann, and just so I can head you off with the past, this one neither of them are dead as of this there recording. One per- Tim Curry was in that. Remember? Sheila, get your ass on stage. T- Terrence Mann. Oh, it's Tim Curry. Entering to the scene, Blix. The Goblin and Blix is played by Alice Platon. Oh, the face of the Goblin Blix was designed after uh, the face of Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. And you can 100% see it. <laughs> when you when you see it, you see it. And she was the one that thought it up. And she, you know, she went to Sir Ridley of Scott and they had special makeup effects uh, implement the concept. But if you look it up, it looks exactly like Keith Richards. Alice Platon actually has another role in this movie. Well, Darkness tells Blix to look for innocence. As no, to, uh, no. To, to look for innocence, to use as a lure for the unicorns. No. What he says is, There is only one lure for such disgusting goodness. Innocence. Innocence. He innocence. Wants, Darkness is a collector, and he wants a horn. It's actually a pretty funny scene. <laughs> He's like, how am I supposed to know that? He takes something and like, Jams it onto Blix's head. Let this serve to remind you. They are each crowned with a single horn reaching straight to heaven. I get the point, Lord. <laughs> it's a funny scene. It is. It is? I'm in a glass case of emotion. <laughs> Already? Yes. Yes. Oh, no. I was for sure. I have so many notes. Oh. I am... I am. Do you have any notes on what's good about Hannibal? Oh my God! Ah, um, uh, this hurts. I'm getting chest pain. <laughs> oh, I've got it, and it's kind of sad. It had Ray Liotta, mm-hmm. who passed away this week. R.I.P. Oh, it did. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, because basically everybody that was in Silence of the Lambs was like, fuck this, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to be in Hannibal, which really isn't a movie, except for Anthony Hopkins for some reason. Okay, yeah, R.I.P. Ray Liotta. So there you go. Cue Lily in the forest. And in the UK version, she's referred to as princess. But in this version, she's just referred to as a lady. And I'm not quite sure why. I have her in my notes as princess, that she's a prankster and a thief. She's not a thief. Yes, she is. Mm -hmm. She... That lady, Nell, had been working on her the laundry. Yeah. And Lily, like, just threw it on the ground. 
blue and fairies. <laughs> Distract, yeah, blamed the fairies. And then as Nell's distracted, she goes in and like takes all her food that she's been working on. Mel said that, Nell said that she could do that anytime you can tell because she's like, have another biscuit or no, whatever you she can't says. Have another be- cookie? You can't. <gasps> cookies. I brought chocolate chip cookies. You can't tell that they say that because there's no backstory on anyone in this entire movie. I brought chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I now have more backstory about the chocolate chip cookies than I do on any character in this movie. Nell sold her. Help yourself. Have another biscuit. Or whatever she says. Yeah. <laughs> Nell touches Lily's face like Team America. Like <laughs> I thought that too. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about the setup a little bit because this is hugely important. The what? The set. Okay. It is very important. This was mainly shot on a studio soundstage. In, at Pinewood Studios near London. The set for Legend was one of the largest scale sets ever built. Okay, so Katrina, do you have another disclaimer? I do have another disclaimer. As I mentioned, we're on location at the Lake House, which is amazing. This place oh. is amazing and is hot as balls in here. It really is. So we had to it's open quite warm. some windows. And we're also in a wind advisory because we live in Kansas, so God knows what noise you're going to hear. Yeah, you might hear some lake sounds. Mm-hmm. So that's just part of the charm. Can I talk to you a little bit about the set for this? Yes. Okay. Are you talking about the set for the cottage or just the set in general? In general. Okay. This was mainly shot on a studio soundstage. Ridley had looked at all the forests all over the place, but had lighting issues. So he decided just to build the whole thing on a stage. What they used was the old Bond uh, 007 stage because it was one of the largest available on the lot. They had hundreds of animals actually living on the set. So it could be like more real seeming and they had just finished filming uh the fairy dance scene which you don't really see in this cut i can't even remember if it's in the director's cut i think it might be okay. but it was definitely cut from like the final cut and in order to have the fires working like in that mm-hmm. they had tons of gas tanks that they would just turn on to make sure that the fire would come to life the buildup of the gas in the ceilings caused a small explosion that just went across the entire ceiling. And by the time they got a hold of Ridley, like from the, he was over in the editing room, it was too late. The entire set was destroyed. Oh man. The entire 2000 or 007 studio that gone, gone up in flames. They only had three more weeks of filming on that set. So that was lucky. Um, have we met Jack yet? Because I have a question. We are definitely about to meet Jack. Lily wants to go find Jack. And he's just a guy that hangs out in the forest. Not in a weird way. We literally know nothing else about Jack. We don't know. What is he? Is he an elf? Is he human? Is he who? What do we know about Jack? Just a simple person that likes being in the woods. Yeah. Why doesn't he have an accent like everyone else in this movie? Because he's a wood person. But we don't know. He's a, We don't know anything about him. He's in the woods. You know, he's Jack. Yeah. Guess who else lives in the woods? Everyone else in this movie. And they all have an accent. You know I'm right. <laughs> there are rumors that because Legend of Zelda came out after this, that the movie was an inspiration for the game. And you can definitely see it oh. when you look at him. It isn't true. And it's dumb. It, this did not inspire Legend of Zelda because they came out like just a few months apart. And that's and games take a really long time to develop. I know because my kids have been waiting for the DLC of Cuphead for like a billion years. Anyway, a different Ridley Scott movie was the inspiration for a, the game Metroid which was also Nintendo, and it was Alien. And the game makers flat out said that, that was, that's what it was. Jack is, of course, played by a very young Tom Cruise, and he had just come off of Risky Business, and he didn't want to cut his hair. And they were like, perfect! Do you want to hear some of the other actors that were considered for this? Yes, I definitely do. Johnny Depp. Would have been better. He would have been great. Uh-huh. Robert Downey Jr. Nah. I don't know, 80s Robert Downey Jr. He, he's a very good actor. He's he's always been incredible. Jim Carrey. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was a flop, obviously. But directly after this, Tom Cruise was in Top Gun. Do you know who directed that? Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott's brother, Tony Scott. Oh, I knew I had Scott in there somewhere. Or I, actually, I was just guessing. This guy, Ridley, is just riddled with all but one brother. I really want to see the new... <laughs> Okay, well, I really want to see the new Top Gun movie, but you know I won't pay for Tom Cruise movies because of all his... Oh, Scientology. Sh- yeah, nonsense. all his shit takes about mental health. I feel like he's 
going away from Scientology, right? That's what I hope. I've heard. Because I actually really like, I'm not talking about this particular right. movie. Yeah. I really, really like Tom Cruise movies. He's incredible in Magnolia. I, he's just... Um, he's great. He's great. He just broke it's my ho- heart. Tropic Thunder? Tropic Thunder. He's so good. It's just all this... I can't be a therapist and support anyone that would say the stupid shit he said about mental health. Katrina. What? You're being glib. It, do you, have you ever noticed his teeth? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're off center a little bit. Both of his two front teeth are to the... They're not symmetrical. They're to like to the right of his nose. Mm-hmm. Like really his takes weak. on mental health. <laughs> okay. Well, this movie was shut down twice and once because Tom Cruise's father died. Are you trying to make me feel bad? I, mm-hmm. I didn't. First of all, I didn't do it. Secondly. I can't prove that. Tom. Well, what was I? Eight. <laughs> you were a real shitty eight year old, though. You were up to no oh, good. You, shit. Knew, you knew you could do some damage. To, to reference the super troopers that we just did, I love me a shenanigan. <laughs> you know, your parents tried to keep you in line, but no. <laughs> Jack blindfolds Lily to, to go show her a surprise because he's into that shit. Okay. I have several things to say. About being blindfolded? No, that's cool. Okay. No, the when they when the unicorns yes. run in... Their horns are like flopping. It's hysterical. I'm sorry. Do you know what a unicorn's horn feels like? Anna. What does it feel like? Anna. I have not seen one in person, it but lo- apparently you have. So please, that- thrill me with your argument. Okay. Well, it looked like a floppy wang. It looked like <laughs> it looked like someone who had too much cavassier. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that horn looked like. It. Yeah. We call that. We don't, maybe a, maybe a unicorn's horn was, maybe, was that the stag? Was that the stag? I bet it was. He takes the most self-involved person to see the most important creatures and doesn't tell her ahead of time, no touchy. And then when she starts to go near him, this yeah. guy who can like fly through the trees yeah. doesn't stop her from bringing darkness upon the world. He's trying not to disturb the unicorns. He's trying to discreetly be like, bitch no and then he just stares at her he's just kind of hoping that she's not gonna do something bad well but why she's the most self-involved human ever of course she's gonna do something bad no yes she told nell told her that being around her being with them is like great for her she's like this is my this is my shit right here it is great for her for them they love her which is all she cares about they love her While she's touching the unicorn, despite being told not to. No, she wasn't told not to because Jack didn't tell her. Or maybe that was in that missing dialogue that's in the UK version. I think so. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and return to that quite a few times Mm -hmm. because uh, it works better and you don't know any better. Okay. So Lily is obviously the bait the darkness was talking about. So while she's touching it, Blix shoots a dart at the stag. Mm Mm-hmm. And she feels really bad about it. And she Aww. runs off and she then she playfully like kind of chucks her ring off of a cliff into the water. To here, Jack, go get it. Well, he chose to do that. She's just like, whoever get, catches this ring gets to marry me. And he like dives off the cliff like he's at fucking Casa Bonita. <laughs> she just fucked everything up. Mm. And then she's like, uh, don't be sore with me, Jack. Go catch this ring and then we can marry. Nothing went bad at that point. He, she, he, they didn't know because he turned around and walked off before the stag got. So he doesn't know that anything is wrong with the unicorns at all. She doesn't even know that there's anything wrong with the unicorns. He she knew just, that she's she like, did. I only wanted to touch one. Yeah, but he knew. Yes. You sounded like that dude. Put your goddamn hand in a goddamn box of pain. <laughs> Stop, stop, stop. (laughs) (laughs) I could watch that a million times. It it only gets like a few thousand views and I don't understand it because it's so funny. We're going to, we'll have to just, we'll have to share that at some point. Okay. These special effects are not that special. They're very special. And no, before you say it was the 80s, this Mm. movie came out in 85. Mm -hmm. Terminator came out in 1984. And you're telling me that this movie couldn't get a realistic storm cloud? It looked like Night of the Comet. A lot of the budget went to securing Tim Curry for this, which, thank God. Yeah, those red balls. 
Thank God. Everything goes to shit, basically, here. Everything just kind of goes to shit after the, the, the stag's horn's cut off. And it's just, it's bad. It's winter. And you know how I feel about winter. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. And then the goblins are using the horn for magic because they're goblins. And they're rhyming. These are the worst rhyming goblins I have ever seen. Yeah, it's what they think is magic. Lux doesn't know no better. He's like, I chased the unicorn. I don't like eating corn. (laughs) I feel so forlorn when I have to pay for porn. (laughs) Have you considered a rap career? These these goblins are ridiculous. They're, I mean, it sounds like they got some sick rhymes. Jack is in a different part of the woods. And he gets a visit from Una the fairy, which is like a little floating light thing, and Honey Thorn Gump. And he's ruler of the fairies. And Gump is played by German actor David Bennett. I think it was really Scott who thought, somebody there thought that his accent was very too thick. He was going very too fast. This is going way too it's fast. going very too German. Wait, did he do this? Was this before or after he did Children of the Corn? Again, not him. It's not the same actor. You know that one little bastard that killed everyone in the town? Yeah, Isaac. Isaac, yeah. Malachi. He, he wants, wants you to. too. Yeah, Malachi. That's, that's, that's it's not. Guy. It is not. Yeah, him and Gump are the same. His his accent was very too German. <laughs> this is my German accent. I'm so glad we have so many German people listening to our podcast Hey, now. we love you, Germany. Thank you, Germany. Love y'all. And we think we have Switzerland, too. Anyway, well, they thought it was too thick, so they got Alice Platon to dub over him. Oh, Alice Platon is Blitz. That's right. Yeah, I listen. So she, yeah, she plays a double role. She's Blix, and then she's also the dub over of Gump. Okay, Jack stumbles upon this camp with Gump and all these other stupid mm-hmm. names, and mm-hmm. goddamn 12 pounds of glitter. <laughs> a lot of glitter. And they're like, the world's ending. Yeah. And you idiot. And yeah. He's like, but I did it for love. And they're like, okay. They turn into us. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, oh, but wine. Okay. Like, he didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. He was, he did it for love. I was dead at the time. I was dead at the time. <laughs> Billy Barty is one of the elves, which is fucking awesome. I love Billy Barty. So good. R.I.P. Wait. Well, Grump, Gump and his crew are just there to ask Jack some questions like, what the fuck just happened? Uh huh. Okay, go go ahead. And then they they toast, and then Jack has the audacity to toast to the trick who caused this fucking mess. <laughs> the it, audacity of this bitch. Let's let's toast to Lily, and they're all like, okay. They're like, oh god, he's that guy in, in your friends group that just got a new girlfriend, and they're all just trying to be buds. They're like, yay to friendship, and then right for those and like to Sarah. And like, oh, God. Oh, fuck her. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway. Well, there's cold white shit everywhere. But they stopped to drink some wine, and I appreciate that. But Jack needs some weapons and armor. So they go to a cave thing where there's some sweet gold armor, and Una reveals a secret. What's up, Una? Thank God there was just all this war stuff hanging around in a cave that's gold. It's a cache. It's hidden, hidden, hidden armor and gold. Blix the Goblin is messing around with the horn, and that really pisses off Darkness. <laughs> he makes an appearance at their camp and throws the horn, and so Blix like, throws the horn to the side, kind of like you, whenever you get in trouble, you're like, oh, nope, just get rid of it. They call him Big D. One of them does. Yeah, Big D. Big D! What, what up, Big D? <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with that? It's, it's a fucking sweet nickname. He's like, she's just a female. She has no power. Yeah, see where see what happens. Obviously, she does. He wrong. Don't underestimate the triangle. Well, uh, Jack has put the pussy on a pedestal. Bing, bing, bing. And it's <laughs> created a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> I love the scene because we get Blunder, the other demon, mm. or the other whatever he is. Fake goblin. Yeah, goblin. <laughs> he crops the horn, <laughs> tries to threaten dart. It's like, now's my chance, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Tartus is like, bitch, please. And he <laughs> just like snatches that, that horn right up. And then he summons a mummy looking thing to kill off Blunder or whatever. And the mummy grabs Blunder's foot. <laughs> Blunder looks down, just goes, shit, please, 
It was only a joke. <laughs> That's like when I prank you. <laughs> oh, you bitch. The movie takes Blunder and he's like, adios amigos. And they go down the thing and Blix just like takes a beat and goes, wow. <laughs> Stupid. So cool, my lord. That looked really amazing. The goblins find and take the mare to darkness. And they also snatch up Lily. Yeah, but at first, that scene, the unicorn that had her horn cut off is... That was the stag. That was the male. Oh, the stag? Is, yeah, the male. Because at the end, it's the mare. Oh. Because they're saying, like, we didn't take the mare's horn because it's just a female unicorn she doesn't mean anything well that unicorn is laying there like don't look at me i'm a i'm a mess and the other unicorn's <laughs> like no you're good but he's really thinking you could use a salad instead of a sunday <gasps> Ooh. you know the, the the unicorn has kind of had its head down like don't look at me yeah <laughs> do you think he thought it was fat well but you, the other unicorn was like no no you're you're good you haven't seen rick and morty really right no there's one where they go to an alternate universe or whatever, and there's a whole bunch of Mortys. And one of them is like an alien one, like a lizard, like frog looking one. They all, they're all basically Morty, but the kid, but they just look a little bit different. One of them is kind of chubbier. And when they're talking amongst them, they're like, yeah, you know, fat Morty is right. And he goes, I thought I was left-handed Morty. Then you should use your left hand to eat more vegetables. <laughs> That's like, between two ferns with Jennifer Lawrence and you should be off pudding because you're fat. Because pudding makes you fat. <laughs> <laughs> Jack and his Jack and his friends. Jack, Jack and friends. Jack and friends. Jack and friends. I love that show. They have to cross a swamp and that's where they encounter Meg Mucklebones. You mean pumpkin head? I mean, it's gruesome. No, that's like, they stole that from Pumpkinhead. That's like literally Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead came out way after this movie. Pumpkinhead stole that from Legend is what I just said. Lies. No, that's like, they stole that from Pumpkinhead. What do you have to say to that now that you know that you're incorrect? Cut your face. Sir Ridley of Scott originally wanted Richard O'Brien from Rocky Horror. He's the creator, and he's also Riff Raff. What, I'm back. Oh, mm-hmm. He wanted him to play Meg, but he couldn't or he wouldn't. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I didn't look into it. But though, um, it's because he was considering him for that role that made him look at Tim Curry to play Darkness. Oh. Meg is actually played by Robert Picardo. He's been in a gazillion movies. Most people would recognize him as the doctor on Star Trek Voyager, but I'm pretty sure you and I would best know him from Inner Space. He was the cowboy. Yeah, he was. That's Meg Mucklebones. Oh, now that I can see the picture, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, him. Right. And He's then played he, in tons. Yeah, he later played Pumpkinhead. He did not. There is a longer scene with Meg in the other versions, but this is for Americans, so they just get right to Jack cutting off her head. <laughs> They are the loudest rescuers ever. They just stumble around the place like, ah, ah, ah. They don't know what they're doing. They're new to this. They're new. Jack and friends, they make it to Darkness's digs, but immediately find themselves in the dungeon, and they are able to escape before the ogre cook is able to snatch them up and bake them into a pie. But how do they escape? Una. Una, isn't she 12? No. I mean, the whole scene is weird. They stay young looking forever. Where she's like, you gotta kiss me to... Kiss me, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. It's she we... wants that. It's weird. And her un... her wings, they're silly. What do you... <laughs> this is a terrible take. Go back and look at it. Those are silly wings. They're, they're her wings. You are being very, like, image judgmental. How can you be upset about the bridesmaid cupcake... And not the <laughs> elf pot pie. You know, if you were the con on this movie, you'd be like, that's not real crust. You'd go on a crust mat. Where are the peas? Where's the gravy? What kind of fat and leavening agent are they using in that? Yeah, what? That's ridiculous. And they just kind of pop the top fake crust off and they're like, oh, there he is. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. This scene is dumber than the cupcake scene 
in Bridesmaids. <gasps> False. No. Because this is a fantasy movie and they're trying to present Bridesmaids as somebody that could really actually do that thing. That is way worse. Can you tell I know nothing about making crust? I'm like fat or leavening agent or whatever shit. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a leavening agent. It's, you know. I mean, technically butter can be a leavening agent if it's like oh, a laminated dough. Okay, never mind. Okay, anyway. Meanwhile, Lily finds herself in a room filled with temptations. Which for her is jewelry and pretty refinements. Yeah. She's like, I got to get out of here. What? Free jewelry? It, if it was my room, it would have just been filled with jelly beans, potato salad, and then a TV open on Netflix that wants to know if I want to watch the next episode. You know what Maya Angelou said? When what? someone shows you who they are, believe them. Lily is a selfish bitch. Yeah. She's immature. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's satire. It's She's immature. This is your labyrinth she take. Has, she has to have growth. They, she can't just, I mean, she, she, they, they set her up to be able to have some character development. Isn't that what you were bitching about in the beginning? She is developing as a character. No one has character development in this movie. She starts out as selfish, and I'm pretty sure she doesn't end as selfish. I'm pretty sure that this is in her best interest to get out of this damp-ass castle no she feels she said that she had that she felt bad about the unicorn and she wanted to re- uh, atone no she saw the mirror she knows black is not her color mm. the darkness tries to seduce her further by sending it's kind of hard to describe if you've never seen the movie but it's like a badass black dress with like a faceless entity in it and then they dance a waltz and she ends up wearing the dress which kind of horrifies her but kind of not no, I mean, she's like, oh, this is bad, but, oh, this is bad. Yeah, the world is ending, and she's like, oh, hey. I could play dress up for a little while. Okay. Can we talk about that dress for a second? Yeah. Because the scene is incredibly memorable. Okay. There's nothing, I don't have any special trivia about it. Mm-hmm. I just want you to acknowledge how amazing that dress is. I am not, I can't, because you'll push the button. Oh, damn. Nice try, French fry. This probably, to like, it probably triggered puberty in a whole lot of boys and some girls. For sure. I have no doubt of it. I'm it's not, fucking cool. I'm not saying anything because your, your hand's real close to that button. Sure is. It's black and it's dramatic. A very deep plunge. Mm-hmm. It's a very deep plunge. It's low cut. Get your hand away from the button. I'm not Just saying shit. It's it's not even low cut. It's the smut cut. Darkness gives Lily the dress, and then he drops. The, I can't believe you didn't even bring up that she has a unibrow. <laughs> how did how did that escape you? Anyway, he drops that he was thinking that maybe they could get married, and he's like, "Look how how much you like that dress and shiny shit. This could work, right?" Okay, so originally the scene was very 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 different. Okay. The script actually had her turning into like an animal thing and then they have sex. Oh and then my. they're like licking each other. I read it. I read the scene they're talking about. And it, they, he's like, and then they lick each other. They have like, they have like moaning and groaning like sex. Yeah. And then some smart exec was like, and this is an actual quote, you can't have the villain fuck the princess. Okay. Can we go back to the scene where... Jack finally has a plan as to how he's going to end darkness, and all of those loud, loud ass goblins are. Oh shit! <laughs> what did you do, Richard? I'm sweating so much in this chair. I you just slipped. slipped. It's <laughs> disgusting. It's so gross. Ew! Ew! Yeah. So Jack comes up with a plan. He's like, oh, no, I've got a plan to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And then all of the little elves or whatever they are, because we don't actually know what they are, because no one explains what anyone is in this movie. They're elves probably. They're like, hip, hip, hooray, and all this shit. And I'm like, "Uh, time is a factor. You're not making it to the (laughs) mat, cheer squad. Tick tock, tick tock. You're not Navarro. They do get distracted an awful lot. But, you know, they don't deal with bad. I mean, Jack barely understands the concept of, like, evil and badness. He only knows goodness. Most of these people do. Let's be they honest. Don't, they don't have any experience with the evil. They just lived in the forest and ate like mushrooms and, and lived a happy life. Jack barely understands the English. Yeah. So let's get back to the scene where Darkness is trying to seduce Lily. Yeah, he is. And I'm like, this would never work until he was able to fill up a 
empty glass with wine and I was like, okay, this guy's got potential. I'm listening. <laughs> but do you have a Peter Grigio? <laughs> Didn't I show you the apostles? Yes. The Jesus. <laughs> What's wrong with Merlot? What's right with Merlot? <laughs> She does kind of mess with him a little bit. And I'm like, oh, a girl. She does. Well, and also Satan is swole. So the the he making. Is. He's also like Tim Curry in all of that from like to, from hoof to to horn. He's like 13 feet tall because he was on like stilts. Poor guy. Well, the bald chin alone is like 11 inches. That was to balance him out. <laughs> oh, God. He was, he was very back heavy. So those are like truck nuts. Wait, do truck nuts actually have a purpose? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. To let you nuts. know, <laughs> to let you know that they were probably at the insurrection. So, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought it was just to even out the distribution of weight. They're on a truck that weighs a ton. Yeah, but I just thought maybe they're it's front heavy, wow. so the truck nuts okay. are there to like you know even out the scale. Okay. She says that. Lily says that she will marry Darkness if she can be the one that kills the mayor. And uh, which Jack and his friends see and they overhear. And Jack is all, you don't know her like I do. She's really cool if you'll just talk with her. Obviously that you're, you're just going to guess because we have no idea because there's no backstory. How old do we think Darkness is? Ageless. Ageless. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he gets tricked by like, oh, no, I want to kill the mayor. And he's like, oh, sweet. He saw her in that dress, and mm-hmm. he hasn't had any. He hasn't had any loving. I told you, he wants some snuggle. He wants a snuggle buddy, and he's able to have like snuggle brain. And then those ball chins will keep flopping her in the face. And right. Tom Cruise should be could show up and be like, "Be gone, Satan! <laughs> I'm from the blue blue planet. <laughs> My name is King Zenu. Is this Scientology thing?" <laughs> Did you call it a blue blue planet? Yeah, I'm from the blue blue planet. <laughs> My name is King Zenu, and I rule the world. Actually, oh, we're gonna get. We just got started, and we're already gonna be ended. And Darkness would be like, not another goddamn Scientologist. <laughs> 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 another one. Oh jeez! Knock like, knock. Didn't you see the sign? <laughs> that, was that close to Tim Curry? No. I don't know what that okay. was. Sheila, get your ass on stage. Oh, then again. <laughs> Terrence Mann. Not the same person. Jack and friends. Jack and friends. <laughs> Figure out. They can use gigantic dinner plates because they're shiny, you see, and they can reflect light all the way down to where darkness is, and they get it all figured out, and they just need one more plate at the very, very top. And Screwball is the one they put in charge of that for some reason. Who's passed out drunk. Screwball. They can't help themselves. Screwball's going to screwball. It's classic Screwball. (laughs) So Screwball. (laughs) Meanwhile, Lily is getting ready to take the horn from the mare with a big ass sword. And Jack has an arrow aimed at her. And Gup is like, look, man, she's no good. (laughs) No, he doesn't. You can do better. No, at first he's like. Jack has faith. No, no. At first, Gump is like, l- l- listen, don't, don't listen with your eyes. Listen with your heart. Yeah. And then like four seconds later, he's like, fuck that. Listen with your eyes. Kill the bitch. At the end of the day, his objective is to protect the unicorn and the unicorn's horn. The horn of the unicorn. The floppy wang. The horn of the corn. <laughs> the double horn. That's a different movie. Anyway. He instead shoots his arrow at darkness. At the same time, Lily uses the sword to cut the chain holding the unicorn, and he straight up bitch slaps her. Is bitch slap an okay word? Is that an okay thing to say? Well, she's a bitch. Black dress bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he bitch slaps her, and then we get a fight between darkness and Jack. Which He's is like, ridiculous. don't you know me, boy? He's like, yeah, I'm King Zenu. Bloop, bloop. Bloop. <laughs> I hope that never ends. <laughs> but pray wait. Finally, Screwball wakes up and remembers he has a job to do. No, Screwball does not wake up. Una floats the hell up there and it's like, Screwball, wake the fuck up. Oh, yeah. You got a job to do. You go, out, go out there and find that fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, he gets the plate to reflect the light down. And at the same time, Jack chucks uh, the horn right into the darkness's fucking chest. <laughs> and then... The wall blows out. And he says darkness floating out to the fucking space. 
And then we get a little mini montage at the end, which you love. Katrina loves montages. I love a montage. But you can do. We, can we talk about this song for <gasps> goodness sake? It, well, the the montage, fuck, <laughs> it really bothered me. Jack gets Lily's ring and kisses her awake. Gump puts the horn back on the stag. They run into the sunset and Tangerine Dream sings an epic fucking song. <laughs> the legend can be now and forever. Teaching us to love for, for goodness, goodness sake. sake. It is so stupid. Oh, the song is rad. That's the lyrics to that song yeah. are stupid. Yeah. What? You're not bringing, I know you're not pulling up the word. Hey, this is a fantasy movie from German electronic band Tangerine Dream, which again is the second soundtrack entirely. You know what? You're in luck. I would read the lyrics, Yeah. but my face is so sweaty, I had to take my glasses off and I can't <laughs> see. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a slippy slide. <laughs> I can't see shit. My seat has turned into a water bed. <laughs> Ooh, you just love your German accent. It's very slippery. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> What's a mustache ride? <laughs> Somehow I'm able to find my margarita, <laughs> even without my glasses. <laughs> hey, guess what? What? That's the end of the movie. It's done. Yes. It's over now. Okay, that dress is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff first thing you come to she looks gorgeous holy shit you can even ignore the fact that she has a unibrow no, i actually didn't see that she had a unibrow and she you know sure I does no, i noticed that that's pe- they 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 make her eyebrows into a unibrow and that's how fucking amazing it is yeah i love this movie so much and yes. i had so much fun making my notes and shitting on it oh i it, it, seriously saying that we've seen this dozens I mean, dozens mm-hmm. of times I used to have the DVD, which is how I was able to watch the director's cut. And I just, I watched the audio commentary on it twice. I love this movie. And there's so much information that went behind it. A lot of the fantasy movies in the 80s, they just didn't quite work. I think that they all were really writing heavily on, like, piggybacking on Star Wars. Thinking that all it has to be is is fantasy and that was clearly not the case because none of them really did great. I think the never-ending story might have done well. I haven't looked at the box office numbers on that. Well, we'll get to it when we do it and then right. throw on it. Yes, but I'd say most did not do great. I personally like the Tangerine Dream soundtrack for it. I like the American version. I actually, I really like the um, the waltz thing because they make it almost sound like a music box. And I thought that that was clever. But the Jerry Goldsmith score is gorgeous it's really nice on a serene look at me yes the lyrics in that last song are really silly comfy. Come on. Now and forever. For teaching us sake. to love for goodness sake how could you tear apart i care for you <laughs> and care very soon and love and like this and try with a straight face to say this is a good song did you think i felt good about that did you think i slept well after saying that about the care bears because i did Okay, but admit it, there is no backstory on None. any of these. You know nothing about anyone. None. I know nothing. Like, what is this place called? Mm-hmm. What's the land called? Right. You know, what's, can, can we get any kind of information? Like, how long has Jack been in the forest? Why is he in the forest? Is he a wood nymph? Is he an elf? Like, what is, what exactly, what is, we need more. <laughs> the fact that there's that long montage, in the, yeah. or that long monologue in the beginning makes me think of that scene in the Grinch like I could get you shut up a minute ago (laughs) details details (laughs) it is a beautiful movie and that's in spite of the glitter for you I know glitter is is definitely I knew that was going to come up a lot it it, but it's to me and I know it's the 80s whatever it just seems like such a lazy let's make things look magical let's just throw some glitter on it yeah we don't have to clean that shit up well, I mean, I think movies were trying to look as fantastical as they could with, you know, limited budgets. And, and that's where they find. I mean, that's what you do. I solved the crime. They didn't want to clean up the glitter, so they burned the stage <laughs> down. Holy <laughs> shit. You're like, you said yourself, there was only three fucking weeks left. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get rid of that glitter somehow. <laughs> what happened to us? You know, this was filmed in England. <laughs> I want to hear from the people, what are the best fantasy movies from other decades? Mm-hmm. Like it? That's what I want to know about. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You can get a hold of us extremely easily. We are on Split Happens Pod on every social. And on Tuesdays, I take the chapter titles that Anna puts together to help us organize our notes. And I put it on Instagram and I put it on Facebook. And if you can guess the movie that we're getting ready to release the following day, we will send it to you early if it is edited by then. Yes. (laughs) Fingers crossed. Uh, (laughs) And we we kind of throw it out. We always joke around. But yeah, if you wouldn't mind just, you know, clicking on over to iTunes and rating and reviewing us. Rating, reviewing. Yeah, follow us, uh, follow us on wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you listen. And if you feel so inclined, if you like what you're hearing, give us a rating and preferably five stars. It's like we... We like the kind that jingles, but we prefer the kind that folds. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.